In mid-August, I traveled to France and I spent a few days in the French Riviera. And having never been there, this was the first time for me to reflect on the importance of new surroundings and experiences and what that could do for me as a photographer. And so with that being said, welcome back to another video. And today I'm going to be sharing my experience of shooting film in France. Now, one thing that I have to note for future reference is that I will go back to France, but maybe not during the season where I feel like I'm being boiled alive. It was so hot that it was unbearable at some point. But it is funny to, to go back and talk about these things. But today, yes, we have a lot to talk about. I have a lot to show you. Also, um, I'll be talking to you about this later on in the video, but I've just released some prints. They'll go live as this video goes live on YouTube. And so basically I've just get, got a sort of chunk of my work that I've done across the year. And, you know, I've just released it now. And obviously we're going to be donating a portion of the profits as usual for a charity. And uh, I'm going to be talking to you about this later on. But for now, I just want you to grab a drink, make yourself comfortable and let's go straight to another video. Now, to me, France, in particular, the French Riviera and Nice, where I was, has a very beautiful, detailed architecture. I really enjoyed walking around the seaside avenues, and during this trip, I became more concerned with shape, composing around shape, and I think that this is a really interesting idea, or method, if you will, of composing photos. And so I enjoyed the idea of building a frame within a frame. And I think overall shape is a very overlooked element in photography because shapes can create interesting visual or formal contrasts. They can play with other elements of the photo and create visual motives or anecdotes. And it can be fun to find compositions around shapes. And I have to admit here that I was very inspired by the recent videos I've been working on, exploring the work of André Cortés or Cartier-Bresson. And also it was very timely because I was just researching for the video about Lisette Modell then, and knowing that she had been photographing at the Promenade des Anglais, which was a place that I was walking back and forth every day and just, you know, enjoying the scenery from, I think it was a very inspirational coincidence. Now, for this trip, I traveled quite light. I took only three cameras with me, and that was my Lumix S5 to shoot video, my Mamiya 7, and my Leica M6. I took loads of film, even though for this trip, I took only three black and white rolls. And the rest was all color, because I knew, being summer, I was interested in exploring those summer colors. Now, another note that I'd like to talk about is that expensive cameras don't make you a better photographer and that you should shoot with what you have. And even though it might seem an hypocritical point since I'm here showing you work done with a Leica and a Mamiya, which technically are very expensive cameras, I'd like to say that I chose these cameras because to me, they're the best fit for my workflow and style in my opinion. When it comes to choosing a camera, and I feel like it, it is my responsibility because at the end of the day, I'm here showing you my work and I do not want you to associate the quality of a certain image to be whether you find my images to have any qualities or not. It doesn't really matter. It's all subjective. But I just don't want you to associate the quality of a photo with its gear. Because at the end of the day, you know, we can compose beautiful images with cheaper cameras. And, you know, I want to bring that more to the channel and I want to create more awareness for this because I feel like, especially amongst young people, I don't want to create the bad impression or the wrong impression. And so with that being said, I feel like if you're just starting as a photographer or if you really want a camera, just think that it's very expensive, of course, 
Just think if it's justifiable or not. It is a good ex- is it, it is an experience that's going to change you. Um, what kind of like you know work are you doing? What kind of projects do you plan on developing with it? What kind of workflow flow do you prefer? SLRs, rangefinders. I personally prefer rangefinders. But talking about expensive cameras, why don't we talk about something else that has become excre- increasingly expensive, and that is film. In this trip, I shot majorly with Kodak Gold in its medium format Splendor. And yes, you guessed it correctly, Splendor here is being used in an ironic way. And this doesn't mean the film is not good. It's Kodak Gold, the stock we've all known and loved for ages. Now with a little tweak, of course, and that is that it's available for medium format. And I've always liked this stock and I shot with it extensively before and honestly I wasn't expecting any disappointing results unless they were of my own fault. The film has its warm tonality that is very characteristic of it and that's why I've always used it a lot in summertime and in more warm climates or locations. And looking at some of my photos here, I really like the tones and subtle contrasts. And if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm a big fan of subtle contrasts. And that's why all my stocks for this trip were very mildly to low contrasted. And for reference, I also took and shot Pancro 400 and one roll of Fomapan 100. Hey everyone, sorry for interrupting the video here. I'm just going to take a minute to plug in the new print release that I'm doing. And that is of work I've developed along the year. And I'm very excited about this. So we'll have a larger selection of C-type prints on fine art paper, ranging from Hanmil Berita and Photorag, as well as a selection of shipping methods. And as usual with other print releases, I've selected a cause which will be supporting with a portion of the profits and this time we're donating to the World Food Programme, which is assisting in delivering food in emergencies and communities deeply affected by disasters and other unfortunate events. So thank you so much for listening and watching and now let's go back to the video. Now, much like with cameras, guys, I just wanted to make sort of like, kind of like create a bridge between what I just said about cameras and talk about film. So basically, I feel like we should shoot the film that we can afford and it is justifiable for us to shoot. Of course, I would love to, you know, like have this insane amount of like portrait 400, portrait 100 that I wouldn't have to store in the freezer that I actually enjoy shooting and, you know, could afford shooting like probably I would have done years ago. But with inflation and the rise of, you know, production costs and etc. And I'm not here to shade any company at all. We all know that the world is, you know, and with capitalism, it just tends to go, the price of things tend to go higher and higher and higher. Just look around you, houses, uh, transportation, just cameras, anything. And I think that it's important to kind of like structure your thoughts when it comes to spending your money on cameras and film. And in film in particular, I feel like when you're going about to spend, say, a hundred dollars on, you know, four or five rolls of film, why don't you ask yourself if that is an experience that will have a return for you? What return will that have for you? Is it a couple of images that you enjoy? Um, Is it an experience? Is it the tones? What is it about it? And then you ask yourself if you could make a better return from those $100. Say, if I, I ask myself this all the time, and this helps me decide what I do, or kind of like, not exactly the film that I shoot, but sometimes like how much money do I put towards it? For instance, like I go and I look and I think maybe I could buy a photo book that, you know, I could use it as an inspiration. I could get in contact. I could go to an exhibition. I could go to a museum and get in contact with pieces of art that will inspire me and that will teach me about composition and other things. But I could also spend that money printing my own work and analyzing it within myself and seeing what I've done right, what I've done wrong, studying my compositions and just have a moment of self-reflection. Okay, this might not be everyone's experience, but to me, the best school I've ever had was the traveling school. And that did wonders for me as a photographer, because in my experience, travel has widened my horizons, has shown me the different realities of the world, has made me realize that everything has value, and you decide its value because you're the one that visually is going to place the value in a specific location, person, situation, etc. 
I've traveled a lot and I love traveling because you always deal with an element of the unknown. There's always a multitude of new things to see, but also a multitude of challenges that can come with it. And with that being said, traveling doesn't necessarily mean internationally. Take time to travel to nearby towns you haven't explored or a part of your country you haven't been. Because if there is one thing that will make you progress as a photographer is to accumulate experience. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. I really enjoy putting these videos together and reading your feedback and going through your feedback. And so don't forget that the print is print drop is now live. So you're more than welcome to grab a print if you'd like to do so, or explore my work in any way, shape or form. Links to my socials will be down below. And yeah, I guess that uh, this has been all for today. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you here for another video very soon. So take care, stay safe. Keep shooting, film digital, whatever you do. Drop a like and your thoughts if you'd like this more, you know, type of content and what your thoughts are on the video. And yeah, I guess that I'll see you. Peace.